Hello, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome back here to the SCS Quals Open Qualifier number one B stream here on SFCL. I am Corbeck. Alongside me is the wonderful Slayzilla. We are bringing you an exciting matchup here between, I believe, Average Joe's versus Homeland. Do want to point out over on Nerd Street Gaming, we do have our A stream live. That'll be HK Rebels versus S2 Esports. So if you want to go check them out and, you know, pull them up, two tabs, keep an eye on what's going, multiple monitors, Slayzilla and I were talking about that before we got started but this matchup slay it's going to be interesting this is this is one that actually is quite impactful for both these teams yeah you're totally right both these teams really do need to get a dub here average joe's home you can see him there with the squad who they're playing with but right now it's going to be average joe's sitting in 15th place you've got homeland just behind him in 16th both of them have gone four and two and they need to secure at least another win to feel really comfortable here. So talking about on the bubble, these two are just a prick away from popping. That's <laughs> very true indeed. And some names you might recognize there as well. Jabrock, who was playing for Leviathan for quite some time. You got Hacker and Mendez as well on that Average Joe's side. Flus, of course, for Homeland. Homeland boys, I think, are relatively well known here in T3. Uh, so they're, they're, uh, they're competitive squads. And I think uh, for all intents and purposes, Lazilla, this is probably going to be a pretty close matchup. Of course, it is a qualifier. It's just a best of one here tonight. So not a lot of room to run. Yeah, it's going to be difficult, right? You have to come in swinging. We can take a look at those map bands really quickly. Oregon, Skyscraper, Chalet, Theme Park all being taken off. So some of those maps that you are used to are been just cut down. That leaves us with Border. It's going to be a beautiful best of one on Border. That's a perfect place to go when you really are looking for some action. And it is going to be Homeland starting on the attack as you saw that beautiful graphic i'm really excited border best of ones i mean that is a heated heated map oh you're putting my thoughts into words right there slay i was looking at that graphic too i was like oh that's uh, that's snazzy i like the little uh lighthouse beams going around the verses and everything but uh border's an interesting choice we narrowly uh, averted a villa right there as well so it'll be i believe the attackers who are taking us in average joe's sensibly picking up on the defensive side here as well and you know that's a probably a benefit we don't have a ton of data on border obviously uh don't have access to the old ts data for this as well but border is usually Usually a bit more of a defender sided map, I think, in the main. So maybe a slight advantage there. But if anything, you know, in these quals has been demonstrated, it's that uh, you can't make too strong of a prediction early on. Yeah, you never know what's going to happen. But we do know that four operators will be put to the bench. Average Joes will have their first pick. They're starting on the defense and they'll have that first attacking op to go. Now, there's been a lot of operators who've kind of swipped and swapped places. Thatcher, of course, one of those hugely popular operators, has since been given a second breath of air every now and again. Nook instead taking a lot of the places that insta ban. Nook, such a powerful operator, can do so well, but won't do anything here on border, at least not this game. Homeland with that second attacking operator, Let's see who they take off. It could be a Thatcher, but again, not as big of a deal here for a lot no. of teams. It's going to be the Osa. That's an interesting pick there. Take the Osa off the board. I mean, the Danish Demon is one that I think we see get taken off an awful lot. But Osa, she's got a she's got a whole mess of problems that she can cause as well. So I'm not actually necessarily surprised to see that go at this stage. Um, it's a little bit out there, I think, in terms of a ban. I would expect maybe a couple of other things that could have gone in that spot. Flores obviously still available. Azami, however, on the defensive side, that is a very sensible ban indeed. The Azami, such a powerful operator, and I. I was casting a collegiate game the other night and Azami was available every round slay and nobody was playing her. I was really, uh, I was triggered. I'm going to be honest. Uh, Mira getting taken off there as well. So a pretty reasonable and expected defender ban side. Yeah, Zombie and Mira, two very powerful operators, and well, you're not going to be able to play with them. Average Joes are starting on the defense. We'll have to find out what they decide to pick up instead. They're going to take us first to that second floor site of Armory Archives. Now, typical rotations on this map will like to see that upstairs site. It's pretty defendable when it comes down to that, but we'll have to see where they flow and go afterwards. Most likely Teller's bathroom and then over to Ventilation Defenders Workshop. One way or the other, but starting up here, we do have Wozy playing onto the dock there. Obviously, Doc got a pretty big buff recently, now able to reinstate two 
100 hit points with a single shrimp syringe, which is absolutely magical. You do have a couple of operators here to just help balance it out. Of course, that Wamai going to do a great job of intercepting any projectiles coming their way. Alibi has been a power player recently. And the smoke from Hacker and, of course, a little bit of the Rome game coming through with that lovely vigil. Yeah, both the Amis, honestly, from the GIGN have really swung back into focus. You sometimes see a Rick here, Rook here as well. But I, if I was going to make one takeaway about this defensive lineup, Slayer, I'd say that there's uh, no hard breach denial. They're just not even going to play that game, right? They're they're going to basically leave the armory wall, uh, I would say, relatively exposed. Did they even fortify that? I, I think they fortified it at the very least. But uh, an easy attack route there for the attacker should they choose. So in favor of what I would say is a little bit more of an aggressive Comp, all things considered you do have a lot of breaching charges coming through with homeland a good nine of them so any soft walls will be quickly taken care of but Bradley already taking just a smidge of damage you're gonna have to be careful you can see hacker even getting a little bit aggro with that smg 11 in hand don't want to play your hand too early as the smoke you become so important as the round plays on but zez now taking quite a bit of damage off the bat homeland Kind of struggling to get a good grip on this round. Yeah, was, you thought exactly what I was thinking there as well with the smoke being really quite aggressive on those peaks. It's a dangerous role for your anchor to be playing, right? And a good kill early on coming out. Engage, caught looking there. The alibi done and dusted. And they'll start opening up some walls here as well. Hacker's position becoming increasingly untenable. Swings out, walks out, I should say, wise. And gets absolutely lit up by Racky. So not the best defensive hold right there, all things considered and probably a deserved three to five here in round number one. Still a couple of bullets going the other way. Racky takes just a little bit more damage, but it's going to be Rival sending Wozy to the ground. Mendez might be next on the menu. He's going to find one before going down. Jabrock, the last man standing. It's all the Wamai in the 1v3. Still plenty of time for the attack to get it done, and it'll be Snipey who delivers that death punch. A really well-executed attack on round number one by Homeland. No problems there. We'll have to see what the switch up is, though, as Average Joe's head into round two. Uh, I don't think that was the best defense that Average Joe really had on offer, if we're being honest. I mean, uh, the walking peaks, right? Some things that just weren't that good in Homeland. Uh, they were very coordinated on that attack. I felt there was very little hesitation. Maybe like the first minute of the round, there was some sort of back and forth about how exactly what they wanted to address the puzzle that was placed in front of them. But as soon as they had it down, man, they were right in there. No hesitation whatsoever. They knew exactly what they needed to do. Well, we'll have to see if Average Joe's can pick up a little bit of that. They're heading downstairs to that bathroom tellers. Now you can have a lot of verticality come into play here, and it won't be from the defense, at least not with explosives. They don't bring in any of those C4s, but you might see some of that play from a homeland as they're going to try to take upstairs best they can, use that hatch, use everything to their advantage. But Average Joe's with a great opportunity to go ahead and tie the game. You mentioned this, we both mentioned this. It's a best of one. You can't allow yourself to fall yeah. back early on. There's no second map, no third map, nothing to save you, no buffer zone. It's all gotta be right here. And so often we've seen the first couple of rounds build enough momentum to seal off an entire game. Yeah, there's no runway. It's a, it's a very short, short run here. And something interesting I wanted to point out is last time it was no hard breach denial. This time they've sort of forsaken the church of the Wamai and the Jaeger here. They have no projectile denial whatsoever. Uh, unfortunately for them, Homeland didn't really bring a lot of operators that could take a ton of advantage of that because they have so many flat pack charges. They only have the two frag grenades from Racky, but still a bit of an oversight right there. And we'll see if Average Joe's decision to to pick this set of line uh, operator lineup if, if that actually works out in their favor i mean you'd hate to see racky uh get get a kill here with a frag grenade when uh when you've just chosen not to bring oh. anybody along beautiful early kill though uh, i guess that uh that answers my question slay because uh racky is deader than dead yeah racky off the board no more of those nades remain snipey is going to try to get some kind of a shot off there hacker does take damage and it'll be zez instead finding the kill mendez right back at you to get the refrag jabrock doubles down and snipey will fall the 4v2 average shows definitely feeling a lot more comfortable at this stage of the round they did than they did on round one 
and Dez still holding angles, but it's going to come down to Floofs and Rival in the 2v4. Oh, Floofs here holding up tight. In fact, both of these players so close to one another, I don't think they quite know just how dangerous this is. Another tight angle hold down there as well for Rivals. The smoke grenade coming out, that's really going to force the walk and the peak here as Mendez engages in a little bit of a violent 10 on 10 and then drops away into a better position. That leaves Floofs with a rather unpleasant prospect of dropping down through a hatch as well. The two of them now kind of kicking out to the sides, Rival still looking for some sort of angle, just can't seem to find it. But I've got a minute to play with here, Slay. They can take their time. It's not an intense rush situation yet. Yeah, but it's definitely going to start looking that way as time continues to tick down and they haven't been able to find any more frags. So they need to start thinking about, hey, if we have to get in there, there's going to be so many extra guns looking our way. Jabrock might go down. It will. Bloops finds that kill with the F2. Rival is going to be sneaking around that workshops area, hoping to find another. Still just over 30 seconds. Wozy got an eye upstairs, but the drop no. won't be successful. Rival brings it to the 2v1, though. Less than 30 seconds to go. Rival AK-12 in hand throws one of those Selma charges. He's almost wall banged right there, but he'll stay in it. He gets hit with some more shots. Slow walking here through the bathroom, heading over to the side. He'll go for the plant. This feels like a desperation scenario, though. Wozy comes forward onto it. Neither of them actually can seem to figure out exactly where he is. The plant will go down. Engage swings. Rival gets one kill. Rival might actually make this work. No! Wozy jumps the corner, gets the kill, and gets the defuse as well. And Average Joes are on the board. Rival was absolutely going for that, and you love to see that kind of just commitment to the play, getting that defuser down. And you saw they didn't have that wall totally opened up, so no easy access. Kind of funneled their way in, and you're right, Rival so close to being able to find that round win, but Abishos do indeed find victory, tying the game up one and one as they head over to their tertiary bombsite ventilation workshop just on the other side of the map. Well, they're, well, they're going to attempt to, well, first of all, get Wozy back, and then second of all, win the round. Looks like there'll be uh, maybe a pause, maybe a reho's called. We'll have to see exactly what's going on. Yeah, a little bit of a hold up there. Um, we're going to cut back now to our cameras, so that'll be that for now. Uh, and, well, I got to say, Slay, I mean, it was an interesting first two rounds, so it's a shame that we had a little bit of a delay right there. I was looking forward to see what was cooking. Yeah, obviously, both the teams, they are matched up well. Just after the first two rounds, right? Not too much you can glean from that, but a good rebuttal nonetheless coming in from round number two by the average Joes. It was still startlingly close to Homeland running away with that second round as well, though. Rival absolutely fighting it out. Wasn't meant to be, but you have to wonder how it's going to progress as we head in and go through more rounds. Yeah, and I mean, that's the kind of gumption you would expect to see, right, from both these teams. Like we said before we got started here, they're both on the bubble. This is critical. The pressure is on for these guys, and they're not going to take this any less seriously than they should, right? I think that's why you saw such a great effort there by Rival to jump in. Yeah, it's going to be interesting, right? I mean, you definitely did see that passion, right? I mean, we talked about it, them being on the bubble. They need to be able to get in here and just get this done. So it's going to be tough, right, to see both these teams just battle back and forth, but it should make for an absolute banger of a game as they are really going to be vying to get through these qualifiers. Still, right, both of them have great teammates. We've seen their names before. We know who they are. It's so hard to really think about who could pull ahead, especially with them having the exact same uh, win-loss ratio coming in here, both of them sitting at 4-2. I mean, just such an evenly matched squad. Well, it looks like we're going to have to take a technical break here, but don't go anywhere. This one has the makings of a very exciting Qualls match. We'll see you on the other side.
All right, ladies and gentlemen, sorry for the delay, but we have returned to Average Joe's taking on Homeland. It's going to be round three right here on Border. Current score is one and one. My name's Lazilla. I am joined with Corbeck and, well, so far, pretty evenly matched. But heading into round number three, one team's going to take the lead. We know that for sure. The big question is, which one? Yeah, that is the that is the big question, the one that they're going to determine for, for us here on this border. Uh, you know, I, I think we've seen both of them sort of flex their chops right here. Average Joe showed us a pretty concise and solid defense on that last round. I mean, they got a little bit dangerous there at the tail end just because of a great individual effort from Rival, uh, but they managed to pull it back together. Meanwhile, we saw a really solid attacking round out of Homeland as well. So I think they both kind of put their skills on display in these first two rounds and, uh, I want to give a slight edge to Homeland right now here. I'll be honest with you, Slay, just because I feel like Homeland really, I mean, they played that last round, the, the two of them that were remaining quite well to get to the situation they were in. But I think it would be a mistake to say that Average Joes are, you know, not capable of beating this Homeland side. Yeah, no doubt about that. Homeland looked pretty good considering it was a 2-4 right, at the end of that at the round, but... Average Joe's did a great job of putting them there. Right? They had that immediate confrontation, took the man advantage, and they didn't want to give it up. So Average Joe's could be looking to keep that fierceness up, but I've kind of seen that this both ways with round one Homeland doing a really good job of cutting through them all. Into this ventilation workshop defense, though, it can be difficult to really hold on. Again, there's a lot of verticality that can come into play this time. You do see that Fluce making an appearance with just one C4, but keep them all. The Fluce running out with the Candelas. You do have a couple more of those to worry about, but still only two nades. This time being brought by Sledge, played by Raki. However, Ooh. Raki is going to be finished off. Well, two big kills right there. Racky and then Snipey both going down. So two of the five doors here taken off the board. Zex has also uh, been put down, but not out. So the res will have to be coming soon. And got to be honest, uh, that verticality you were talking about there, Slay, coming in huge as Floofs is wiped out as well. Oh. So it's basically a 1v5 and it's the uh, grit gumption of rivals here. But I feel like he's a little outnumbered in this scenario. Still, the res will come in so zez is back on their feet and so two guns now versus five uh, uh, this is gonna be uh this is gonna be a bit of an uphill sled here i think for homeland esports average joes have played this quite well indeed diffuser is picked up but it's by zez the low health member of the team it doesn't look great here average joes have taken no damage back in response i believe engage just got that from running through a wall rival gonna be brought even lower than the previous low health team made and now sits at a single round away from death zez has to be careful too bullets do hit hard in rainbow six siege and so does time ticking it down under 60 seconds to go you know, it's not good, and it's made even worse as Hacker takes down Rival. The 1v5, this time with Zez, and such minimal HP is just about as close to a round over as you can get. Might be a good time to talk to the team a little bit. We'll see if that's going to be the case here. But either way, this round is in the books as an average Joe's victory. Well, there's the heartbeat sensor picking up the location of Zez. You cannot hide from the pulse in this scenario. Uh, no nitro cell likely to destroy uh, this unfortunate Zofia here, but uh, there's not a lot they can do in terms of timing either. Pulls out the grenade launcher right there and just sort of dances around here on the top deck. It doesn't want to make it a flawless round if they can avoid it. Zex now in a different position, but again, presumably they might be spotted here, though they are up on the desk, which is a bit of a sneaky maneuver. Zex looking down, waiting patiently, and uh, I don't think anybody's going to take that bait, my good man. That'll be the end of that round, and the average Joes pick up another one on the defense. Yeah, really good job, and you saw how explosive these rounds have all started out. I mean, it's not been that blow for blow, that one kill traded back until you get down to the 2v2. No, it's been one side completely decimating the other, putting them in a really difficult position, and so far the team that has gotten that opening kill, opening flurry of kills, has gone through and uh, taken the round. We're going to head back upstairs. The first site we saw so long ago, Armory Lockers. 
where it's going to be another opportunity for Homeland to take the dub and tie this game back up. In the same vein, though, Average Joes, they're looking heated up after those two rounds. They're not going to be afraid anymore. We could see them take a third round here. We could. I mean, it's worth pointing out that Homeland pretty easily dismantled the defense that was set up here by the Average Joes last time, and it was quite a disparate defense as well, Slay. We saw them playing well off the site. Uh, they didn't really do any hard breach denial or anything like that, and they're sticking with that general plan. Interesting, by the way, both of the GIGN boys now making their appearance. I did mention this earlier that we could be seeing it. It's Rook as uh, Mendez is playing as the Rook and Wozy here as the Doc. So armor and heals for all. Uh, and you've got Hacker back on that smoke again as well. So we'll see if there are some more aggressive plays in the tank there. Last time the smoke played uh, quite down and dirty. This time they're uh, quite extended out here as well. Menden Mendez uh, holding up here in the corner of CCTV. Yeah, love to see both of those operators come through. They're so good at what they do. Sniper already taking quite a bit of damage. Again, for who don't know Brooks armor now gives a withstand ability to anybody who has it equipped so all five of these players can pull a pre-nerf Zofia and pick themselves up if they get down really powerful and combine that with Wozy able to boost them back to full HP could be looking at an iron defense but Raki already puts a hole through one of the heads there hacker will fall again the smoke may be getting a little bit too aggro and engage falls right in turn very similar, startlingly so, to what happened around number one at 3v5. The problem here on Mendez Island is Mendez uh, cannot really get back to the site if the plant starts to go down. Racky actually getting the sight line right there, going for the cutoff. Rival trying to establish a different sight line as Wozy gets hit a couple of times. Floof creeping forward right here, preps the Candela, but it's Mendez who's dead. Oh, Zex gets two right there. Jabrock is down as well in a flawless round as Rival just steps up to the broken wall panel and guns the dock down. What an answer to the flawless round that Average Joe's just hit up. Homeland wasting no time to bring it right back and ties the game up as well. I mean, that attack is brilliant. They got those opening kills so quickly. You saw the smoke and then the alibi fall. And you mentioned a lot of those players just kind of stuck in not great positions. Average Joe's completely took advantage, or excuse me, Homeland completely took advantage of that and was able to find that round win. Again, we talked about how close these teams are going to be matched up, and it's looking to go that way. Both teams finding two rounds of peace as we head to round number five, back to bathroom tellers. And this was a really close round. Thanks a lot to Rival, bringing it back from that 2v4 to a 1v1. But we'll see if Average Joes can keep their rock-solid defense downstairs, or if Homeland will find a couple of cracks. I do love that downstairs defense, and they apparently love trap operators as well. I like this. You've got Engage on the Legion. You've got Jabrock here coming out on the Thorn. So, uh, uh, Razor Blooms and Goo Mines galore. And I love the addition of Hacker on the Castle as well. This actually worked out pretty well for them last time we saw Hacker play that role. So, uh, I have high hopes for this general setup. I guess actually Mendez Malusi is almost kind of a trap operator in his own right. A little bit of a different style of trap, but you get the idea. Um, so this is going to slow Homeland down a little bit. They're going to have to, you know, take these things into consideration and be a bit cautious here. And I think that's the general idea that Average Joe's is wa waiting for. They don't want to blitz slay like, like they saw on the last site. They just don't want that happening again. Yeah, you have to think about what happened on the last time you were here. Ooh. Snipey, though, is going to get absolutely finished off by Hacker. This time playing on the castle gets that opening pick. Once again, Average Joe is just putting in the work. Racky's going to look for something. It'll be Rival to find the kill. Picks up the double now. Suddenly, the script might be flipping a bit. Rival not looking to let this go easily. Out of the triple kill as he pulls down Hacker. The 4v2 is now on the other side with Engage and Mendez left all but alone. But still two minutes to go. Homeland with a great hold and it's made greater. Bloofs and Zez find the final kills and Homeland ahead on the scoreboard.
Oh, the traps were entirely a non-factor, so I'm glad I spent some time talking about them right there. Slay, uh, they just uh, ripped them apart on that one. Homeland, no hesitation. Again, and this is the kind of aggressive attacking style that we've seen in the rounds that Homeland has won, right? When they hesitate, it doesn't look so good, but uh, that, that round was no hesitation. I thought it was off to a bumpy start because we saw Snipey fall so early, and to be honest with you, Hacker looks super comfortable with that MP4 and 5 in hand, right? He just just, he doesn't look particularly fuss, but a good series of kills, huge set of plays by Rival right there to really put them back over the top. So that that crack in the in the rock solid defense you were talking about right there, I, I think we just saw it slay. They just could not uh could not handle the tempo. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, the tempo is certainly being sped up here. Rival, I believe, now has eight kills. I think he had four pre rehos and now four post rehos. Putting in the work, no doubt about it, that AK-12 is a phenomenal weapon to go with a lot of gun skill here. And the rest of the squad has been doing some great work as well. Look at Zez, now 3-0. and oh. And to the other side of Average Joe's, a couple of players, you know, still trying to heat up. Of course, in this post rehost world, we don't get the full scope of things. But this is their final round on the defense and it's going to be a round that they really want to tie up and get that 3-3 homeland getting a 4-2 switching out of the defense could be very powerful for them and they don't want to let that happen well you see wozy on the pulse here doing a little bit of scanning trying to pick up any uh, heartbeats here of uh, the attackers who are moving outside it's a much more horizontally oriented attack this time from Homeland Esports. Snipey engaging in some gunfire already right off the rip. Mendez backing up around the corner there and just holding out. Mendez doing uh, duty, covering down over there. Oh, the frag grenade comes sailing in. The impact has to go out there to open up some holes for the Malusi to shift their position. Wozy just waiting on the doorway for the kill. Rafi dumps rounds but doesn't find what they wanted. Instead, it's Mendez who strikes first. Wozy gets one, traded out almost immediately, and now Zex is back in action with that DMR, picks up two huge kills, and keeps it at a 3v3. Oh, this is a very close round, but Zez is not nice. done yet. Onto the triple kill, finishing off Hacker. Again, that smoke player dead. It's just going to be engaged, and Jabrock left alone. The Oryx and the Legion, a tale as old as time. And in the 2v3, not a bad composition to get this done. Those goo mines can give up some information, help to slow down the homeland push. And says, not at full HP, won't be able to get back either. But you do have those Candelas to worry about. One goes in, but Zabrox still with a little bit of verticality of his own. Looking down from above, Blue's taking a little bit more damage there as well. Sitting on that goo mine as we head into the final 70 seconds of the round. Yes, Jabrock waits on high, perched like a falcon for the jump in, but it's Flukes who strikes from above and I think gets the kill right there. Jabrock now waiting. Jabrock fires, misses his golden opportunity. The dive does not manifest into anything of note. Jabrock jumping around on the other side now tries to vault the rail and Zex is waiting below with machine pistol in hand. Easiest kill of his life right there. Another good round coming through from Homeland as they're not slowing down at all. Now three rounds in a row and it all started off after that flawless round on round number four. They've been heated and now switching onto the defensive side. We'll have to see if that lovely momentum just keeps on rolling with them or if it's going to be slowed down here. The switching of the sides might do something to switch average shows into a better gear. We'll have to find out what is going to be the case as defense side for Homeland could be very, very strong. We'll have to see the operators they bring out, but it is going to be that Armory Walker's defense here and a couple of the same, a couple of switch outs. You do have a Mozzie coming in from Rival, but other than that, a lot of operators that we love and know. Zez on the Alibi is something that I am terrified of right now. I would be terrified too, to be honest. Uh, seven and zero, oh, by the way, says so. Uh, they didn't have that one round where they were the last one left alive, but they uh, they didn't die. So uh, there you go. Uh, looking at it too, I I like the uh, potential you know maintenance of this aggressive tempo that we've been seeing. These are all operators that can very much push and get aggressive. Floofs, of course, has not gone for the MP5K, has gone for the shotgun. But interesting too, a lot of anti drone in this setup. The two. 
prominent anti-drone operators in here. So Average Joe's intel gathering ability, should they choose to engage in droning, which as responsible Sheets players, they should do. Uh, but if they choose to engage in it, they're going to have a hard time about it, Slay. This is not going to be a particularly easy walk in the park for them. And I think that enables Homeland to play that much more aggressive. I think they're going to be looking for some early kills here, kind of pushed up on the edges of the map. Yeah, whenever you think about that drone denial, you always just kind of go back to the good old days on Clubhouse where you see that SSG strat roam. You've got all the drone oh, hate yeah. and you can really do, just like you were saying, some good roaming and some really good aggressive plays here. Hacker does get the dot on Snipey. Could be in some trouble here. The Orc's going to have to find a way out or into an engagement as he still looks out that hole in the window. A lot of drone work still happening. We're just in, a, excuse me, we're just a minute into the round. So they're trying to get as much information as possible before they start making that push. Hacker gets domed by Racky to start things off. Average Joe's now taking a couple more gunfights here. Engage down around 25 HP. Well, Snipey's day isn't getting any better despite that early kill. Still in a very un favorable position right here as he's ducking up and down behind the desk near ctdv but he's got backup rivals getting in on the action though in another location the peroni roars snipey gets in on it too and suddenly the average joe's attack is just eviscerated there's nothing left jabrock will get one kill onto zed so finally gives the player the death that they have been waiting for jabrock continuing to try and fight it out won't get it it was a valiant effort there at the end, but man, the Homeland defense here, Slay, is looking mighty fearsome indeed. Yeah, just after that one round, and that's four in a row now that they're building up, and it's what we're talking about in a best of one. This kind of momentum can just close a game out so quickly. Average Joes have got to get moving. We're two rounds away from this game being all but wrapped up. They're going to head to Bathroom Tellers now for their second defensive round. Yeah, this is going to be really telling, right? This is such an important spot here for the average Joes to jump in and put an absolute hold on the domination that Homeland has set up here. We'll have to see if they have the right composition to do it. The defense does change a little bit, but a lot of those operators remain. Both of those same drone hate ops come back again. But this time, a doc joins us with Snipey. We'll have to see if that's going to be a real benefit to the team. Love drone hate as a turn. That I really appreciate that. Sounds like something out of Terminator. Like the humans that are left, they're a bunch of drone haters. I mean, they would be at that stage. But interesting, by the way, Wozy switching over to the Fuse here. So Fuse will make an appearance in this lineup. I mean, uh, okay, Fuse is not always bad but i just don't know if that's the play i would be making slay here but again i'm i'm not competing in scs quals so i don't know if i get to talk on that front necessarily interesting too the homeland esports lineup remaining largely the same snipey though swapping around to get that dock in so they want that healing stim and they want that gun and both of them very valuable indeed uh it, it's gonna take i think a little while here for average joes to determine exactly how they want to pick this apart i think they really need to emphasize a methodical push here though they got to clear out cctv establish the verticality and what have you and losing mendez early on to a nitro cell well that's not going to help with any of that <sighs> homeland has been so on top of getting these opening kills and even when they don't they're able to bring it back so with mendez dead yeah it definitely doesn't bode well for average joes they're gonna have to fight that much harder and if you're looking at homeland they've got these two prongs that have just been poking all over the place boost does go down to engage but the players i'm talking about zez and rival both of them with seven kills apiece, have become absolute menaces on the battlefield and they're going to be the real contention points here that average joes has got to take care of sooner than later great work though getting in there putting it right back to the 4v4 gives them an even playing ground and now now Rival tries to jump in there, taking down Engage. Hacker right back with the refrag, a 3v3. Keeping it very tight here, but Wozy still not in position yet to drop those fuse charges. I debate whether they'd actually be effective at this point in time, though certainly that seems to be what Average Joes are angling for. Indeed, the entire effort they're making here is to get Wozy into a position where he can use those on the bomb site. They might be sorely disappointed, though. There are not a lot of defenders actually stuck up on those sites. If they go quickly, they might actually be able to use this to their advantage without sacrificing too much, but Hacker will throw 
throw down the flat pack charge and drops through the hash. That was such a smooth transition. I thought we were still watching the ace there for a second, but we are not. Racky here on the low ground actually should hear that drop. Checks over towards the window, barely sees the top of the head. Wozy engaging in a short little gun battle, but neither of them finding an advantage. Less than 40 seconds to go. You've got those defenders holding it down, but the fuse excuse me, the defuser is being planted by the ace. We'll see holding an angle out outside is gonna be so big and finds a shot onto Raki. Now the 3v2, Zez trying to creep around, might be caught on that left side here, focused on looking towards that window, trying to find out where the fuse is playing. Snipey lays down some shots, Zez does have an idea, picks it oh. up to the 2v2, doesn't get the second. It's gonna be Hacker fighting that one. The 2v1, Snipey, all that's left. Does have that MP5, but doesn't have a life as Jabrock finishes the round and Average Joe's put a stop to the homeland run. Good, good play there from Average Joe's on the tail end of that round. I love the fact that they were very methodical about it. It wasn't necessarily the way that I expected them to go about it, but Man Slate, did they go about it in a good way? They obtained the verticality that they needed. They decided that the fuse was not really what they wanted, but they still kept those murder holes and held them, which is what enabled such an effective plant situation right there. So good post plant defense, good setup by the Average Joe's. They need more of that uh, in their tank if they want to get the edge on homeland here but uh, i don't know that it's going to go any easier for them the, the problem is now that they've shown that plan and they haven't really shown any signs of changing it homeland should be able to counteract that relatively effectively a couple of interesting additions to this defensive lineup might actually be coming out with that in mind slay they've got racky on the valkyrie and they've got snipey here on the captain they've also brought floofs uh on the frost so a lot of traps in this homeland defense yeah, Valkyrie is one of those operators that almost constantly gets banned. So for her to sneak through, definitely good to take advantage of using those black eye cameras. Doesn't bring out the C4 this time. It's going to be those impact nades. You do have two other C4s being brought with Rival and Snipey. Playing on the Mozzie and that cap can you were mentioning. So you got a couple more trap ops here. Could be exactly what they need as they go back to that same side. It really can be a mistake when you don't think about what you're doing to change with this composition it might be exactly what they need snipey waiting and ready but flus and racky already taking quite a bit of damage and that doesn't bode very well average joes all they have to do is find a couple of kills and we've seen how quick it can snowball into a win easier said than done but it's definitely been done by average joes before and they need to keep that up here if they don't want to go to match point well, Lion still has three pings in the pocket here. Engage could use them at any time, clearly waiting for a staging moment to get them in. The rest of the team, I mean, they're taking their time about this, which I think is good. They need to play this as cautiously as possible. Jabrock still with the two frag grenades here as well. Wozy has actually gotten into a decent position here and will start popping those fuse charges. So the first time we've actually seen them activated, uh, an effort by Racky there perhaps to kind of counter it out or at least get a vertical sight line so they can see anybody moving on the floor above them. Otherwise, a very sort of slow, steady buildup. Rival breaking the seal on it, though, will take Jabrock down. And that's a good early kill right there. The sledge critical for good verticality will not be in the lineup anymore. Yeah, getting Jabrock off the board always going to be helpful playing that sledge, but still have a big problem with the HP game. Snipey now goes down. The cap can finished off by Engage. They're doing a little bit of that upstairs clear, trying to get as much control of the map as they can. Wozy here as well. So as three of those fuse charges that are available and could be outright deadly to some of these players who don't have much to play with. Zez, in fact, final up with any or with a full HP bar. You see a lot of that control totally given up to Average Joe's. 60 seconds on the board, and they're ready to get dropping down and put a plant on the floor. This is a really important position, and Homeland needs to have an answer to this. They've got those line sight lines to play off, but the sight lines, they work both ways. Mendez is watching it again. This position is being held. Such a good murder hole, really preventing reinforcements from getting back in here. The plant coming down from Hacker right away. Valkyrie comes swinging around the corner. It's a little too late, though. The diffuser was already planted. It's Engage on the cover, who picks Racky up. Zex now pushing over to the window, knows that the lion is waiting, checks for the repel. It's not there. Wozy firing some shots in, won't 
find anyone, floofs is down. That just leaves everything on the back of Zex, who is very low on health indeed, is trapped here in a situation, too, where he basically has no idea where his opponents are above him. He only knows that there's a lion hanging just outside the window, goes for the challenge, engages, waiting. The Viking crew cut delivered, and Average Joes will pick up another win. Average Joes starting to build it right back up. We saw them go on that two-round-in-a-row run before, back on two and three. This is the second time they've done that so far, but you can't forget Homeland built up their walls brilliantly in between that time, and they've still got the round advantage. Again, just two rounds away from closing this map out, but are they going to be able to? Now, back upstairs to Armory Lockers, they did have a victory here. They did a great job. But the big problem the is what happens after bomb. they go to Armory. They haven't shown us their tertiary bomb site. We haven't seen Ventilation Workshop. The bathroom tellers obviously not working too great for no. Homeland's defense right now. We have to see if they can pull this one down to put it to match point. You can say that again. It's not a site that I think they'd particularly be interested in playing. And I've got a little, I've got a little bug there too about people playing the same site over and over again like that because it usually, if it's if it's broke the first time, it'll be broke the second time as well. Uh, taking a look here at what Homeland is offering for a defense, only one drone denial operator, so a little bit of a shift there. They brought Rival in on the Mozzie. They're sticking with the Valkyrie pick. I think that's a very solid choice, all things considered. I, I felt that the intel was beneficial to them on those lower sites even if it didn't necessarily bring them the win looking at the attackers i mean i think they've hit a bit of a rhythm here with the things that they like they like jabrock on the sledge engage on the lion is clearly paying dividends mendez did great work on the iana they've got some throwables in here as well and i love the addition of wozy here on the nomad but zex getting early that's hacker down and that is your only hard breacher taken off the board within the first 30 seconds that's going to sting a lot to have Hacker go down. That Ace can be so powerful, not only being able to do some hard breaching, but also that AK-12, just a great gun. Average Joe's going to have to reconcile and figure out what the plan is and how they're going to move forward. Luckily, you know, this map, it can be a little bit weak on the side of how many walls you really do need to open up and how important it is compared to some of the other maps in rotation. But it still could be just that little less of an angle, that missing spot that they won't be able to open up anymore. Homeland continue to move forward. Raki now takes down Jabrock. It's a 5v3. You can definitely feel the tension here for Average Joes. They need to find these refrags. They need to get back in the saddle. Woozy does pick up the diffuser, but it's going to be such a long road to getting it planted. The attacking side so disparate here as well, Slay. They've had their best rounds, I think, on the attack when they've sort of been playing together and they're just not together at all. They're basically in three different corners right here. Uh, and I don't think that bodes well for their ability to get refrags or trades or anything like that. Zex is covering down an opposite angle. They've got cover going the other direction as well. Engage here, trying to regroup. Mendez actually making a wide push around the outside edge, I think, to get in a more favorable position to check down into archives so i mean the positioning is happening and they're starting to group up a little bit mendez is going to initiate there run smack into an alibi mendez will get a kill it's flus who goes down they're going in for the rapid plan on the door this is actually working out mendez on the cover and engage jumps in as well you gotta be kidding me nitro cell comes sailing over the top it's too little too late and by the time rival gets here and hops up on the desk they've already gone back to roost thinking you know such a long way to get that plant down they definitely made that distance quick the 2v3 rival and snipey have to get this one out they want match point average joes have done such a good job of getting back in this game the defuse could be coming out as a little bit of a ninja play here but he's going to be pulled off and shut down pulls mendez with him but it's not going to be enough at all and average joes find their third round in a row and tie the game right back up at 5-5, five, five, exactly where we all want to be. It's going to be at the very Ooh. least a full 12 rounds, but we could see some overtime here as well. Well, speaking of ties, it's worth pointing out over on the A stream at Nerd Street R6, uh, HK Rebels tied 3-3 three to three with S2 Esports, if you were wondering about the score of that game. But back here, a very, very tense matchup between these two sides. Again, reminder, both these teams are on the bubble here. So uh, there's a... 
There's a lot for them to play for. I'm not surprised that we've got a timeout in here by Homeland Esports, kind of regroup things a little bit, slay, figure out what's going wrong. I mean, I, that round in particular, that felt like a round that they should have won. And the fact that they played so poorly into that coverage that Average Joe's laid down, I mean, it was great adaptation by the side of Average Joe's. Don't get me wrong. They did a spectacular job right there, but I think Homeland should have handled that a lot better. Yeah, I mean, they had such a great beginning. You saw those early kills come through and Homeland really should have had it. Like you said, they had such a great start to the round. So for average shows to get in there and take it away from them is just huge. And it really does go to show that neither of these teams are going to be playing softball here. They're out for the victory. They're out to just go in as, as hard as they can because they need this W. They need to be able to get through the qualifiers. And with both of them so close to doing so it's definitely showing their average shows tied the game up and we're right back into the match but something i want to highlight average shows if you're looking at the kills now again not a fully total kill count because we did have that rehost but all of them are so well spread out compared that to compare that to homeland and again it's pretty much rifle and zez doing all of the work you can start to think about is it going to be hero plays or consistency that wins the day out tonight always a good question to ask slay and i always kind of look at those sort of spread out kill counts and i do think it indicates some togetherness and i will say again i mean average joe's best rounds have been the ones where they have been playing really tightly on one another and you saw that up there uh in archives they were all very close all very coordinated the the bad rounds they tend to have are when they get a little bit more disparate when they get a little bit more spread out they're they're really not grouped up that's when they tend to get punished quite severely by home land so they need to avoid that as much as possible they tend to start all of their rounds uh pretty wide open and then once they kind of find a target they coalesce and, and push how they want so it's these early stages of the round where i think that they're at their absolute most vulnerable yeah i mean we've definitely seen that but as that round progresses them being able to come together has worked out so well but this time hacker is able to find that opening kill Racky will fall that's going to be the valkyrie of course those black eye cameras most likely put around already but that's a great gun and player off the board there's a refrag this time snipey to take down jabrock you've seen the sledge go down early a couple of times and a pretty powerful op to take off early on mendez in another gunfight but it's going to be Wozy taking out Snipey to the 4v3, an action-packed first minute that leaves Average Joes with a 4-3 man advantage. Zex is watching this door, just waiting for somebody to step through it. I think basically listening for the sound cue, it is not forthcoming. Mendez here actually sees the head of the alibi pop up ever so briefly, the beret showing up, and that I think gave away the play a little bit. Rivals will hit, but Wozy there immediately to trade it out. Zex is actually falling back now. The entire team sort of coming back into roost uh, on this point. What do they have? They only have two left. It's just the alibi and the smoke. I mean, admittedly, smoke value here with two grenades in the tank still to use this is a far from an ideal situation here for homeland esports on such a critical round they really just have to circle the wagons and batten down here and hope beyond hope that average joes will play into them well you do have that smoke still left two canisters with him is it going to be enough? It's hard to say, right? There's a lot of time that Average Joe's has to really take exactly whatever steps they need. With Zez, limited HP, you really do question if Homeland can pull this down. Average Joe's so close to pulling that match point, they could have this game over in two. Just the same for Homeland, though, but it's going to be these final 30 seconds that really deliver it. Wozy preparing, pushing in, getting a couple of flashbangs bust out as well. Zez holds an angle. It's going to be that MX4 Storm looking and ready, but the plant being attempted now by Hacker. Zez pulls it to the 2v2. Wow. A second, and it's wow. third! It's a triple kill by the Alibi! You were talking about hero plays. I think you just got one right there, Slay. Huge hero play from Zex. The kill leader for the team gets in the action. The storm just chattering away right there, picking up huge kills. Oh, my Lord. What a clutch moment there for Homeland Esports when everything looked so grim. 
Yeah, I mean, that's the great thing about Hero Play is, is they look like that and they just bring so much hype. You imagine how the team feels after that beautiful job coming through by Zez pulling it up. But again, the consistency, it's still there from Defense Average Joes. But they don't exactly have the same pop off, right? We didn't see that. Now Zez up to 12 kills and we're headed into what could be that final round, Corbic. This could be it for Average Joes here, but... Are they going to let it happen? We've seen so many times before where they're able to wrangle their way back in. Can they do it again? Well, it's not a bomb site that we've seen. You know, I don't think this necessarily favors Homeland. They've not had a lot of luck down here on the ground floor. So that's something I think, you know, you got to keep in mind. Wozy still flashing Fuse. And I mean, honestly, the Fuse is probably going to get a little bit more value on this particular bomb site than on some of the other ones that they chose to bring him on. So that's something to keep in mind there as well. It, verticality is going to be critical here. For homeland esports now we know that they can play verticality we have seen them do it it's just they have to repeat that trick now and you know it goes back to the side of average joes they have to respect that verticality and be incredibly cautious uh that fuse for example very vertical operator target number one oh my snipey right on the other side of the window from mendez and the leap out oh. mendez survives how did Mendez survive that? It's just by the skin of their teeth. Obviously, such a little to play left with now, but Snipey dead. Rival is going to finish off that work. Mendez not going to be part of this round anymore. What an opening kill. Snipey really should have had it, but the double oh! with the C4 by Flu sends this completely spiraling into Homeland's favor. Two minutes left, and it's already engaged in Hacker against four players who want this very much so. Racky to the 1v4 and engage has got to feel it. It's so bad. It's such a dismal position. Can he get out of the 1v4? The answer is set right there with Skull. It's a no as Homeland take a 7-5 victory. Wow. Great finish there from Homeland. They have to be incredibly happy about that. That nitro cell up through the floor. I was saying, Slay, verticality is going to be huge right there. And it was the bitter end. Perfect. You could not have asked for a better nitro cell in a critical situation like that. And now Homeland, they're walking away with the 7-5 win. Average Joes just didn't have it in them. And so their claws prospects are going to get a little bit more grim after that. I mean, what a great matchup between these two players. It was in our teams, rather. It was an absolute grind the entire way through. And you really did get to see some great moments from both squads. But at the end of the day, it was those hero plays that cemented it. But that might be taking away a little bit too much from the other members of Homeland. All five of them played great. They all deserve that victory. Great work from them. We'll have to see how they can do as they advance further into the quals. Well, ladies and gentlemen, we hope you enjoyed that particular ball here. That's going to do it for the Breeze stream for now. We're going to be back in just a little bit for the next round. We're going to have one more match on this channel. But for now, we encourage you to go over to stream A. That's Nerd Street R6, where you can see HK Rebels sitting at five, uh, S2 Esports sitting at four in a very close and very exciting game. But for now, uh, we'll see you on the other side.